Joining me now, Senator James Langford, Republican from Oklahoma. Senator, with a welcome to you, sir. So we're talking about the lunch right now that the president is holding to discuss border security. A couple of things I want to ask you about. What do you take from the president's phrase via Twitter where he says he's open to discussing border security? There is no mention of the wall, despite the 150 times or so that he has only talked about the wall, just bringing up border security yesterday. Is right. this strategic? It is something. Is it something to your mind that is a new development in the president's approach to our border? Actually, the president's used the term border security quite a bit for the last year. I know he puts wall out a lot of times uh, when he's talking as well, but he also uses the term border security a lot. You'll hear him talk a lot about technology and ports of entry and additional agents and additional courts. Uh, we have an 800,000-person backlog. I mean, all, all those different things that are out there. So I, I, I don't see it as a big shift in using border security except in this negotiation uh, because it is a larger issue. All right. So, Senator, the fact that there are no Democrats inside that White House luncheon right now, certainly we don't know exactly what's being said. But if you're thinking about those that have been assembled, and you heard Jeff Bennett TikTok, who all's there, is this a group that the president is trying to gauge, say, even the, the hard right, for have, perhaps those in the Freedom Caucus, to see what they might be willing to compromise with? Is that what he is trying to do? Listen to that extreme. And then perhaps Lindsey Graham, who might bring, here's what the Democrats are doing, since he has had a lot of harsh words for the president on this topic. You know, I, I would anticipate the president's having a lunch to be able to talk about where are the boundaries for everyone and what are the key things that we're trying to accomplish. I would assume with Lindsey Graham being there, much of the conversation is going to circle around Syria and Afghanistan. Lindsey's been very passionate about dealing with Syria and Afghanistan. I just returned from Afghanistan a few days ago myself as well. And so I would assume a lot of that conversation is going to circle around what is our foreign policy uh, in the Middle East and what are we trying to do to be able to push back ISIS. Uh, so, but obviously all of us will learn more about the final negotiations once they finish up that lunch. Senator, are you at all frustrated with regard to our border security and this wall by that which is promoted by the Freedom Caucus? Do you think that they have been an impediment to getting something physically or theoretically agreed upon? I don't actually. I think they're still pushing for the border security issue. Again, the fencing, uh, if you want to go back to using wall and fence and, and such, fencing used to not be a partisan issue. As you know, in 2006, the Secure Fences Act passed overwhelmingly with Republican and Democrat support, put 650 miles of fencing. Uh, when we deal with what's happening, for instance, at San Ysidro right now, we have 5,000 or so uh, refugee migrants that are trying to be able to push into the United States. They're literally camped out within 250 yards of the largest legal crossing in the world. Uh, that is the San Ysidro crossing. So you have 100,000 people a day cross that border legally that actually go through the paperwork and have done it the right way. Then you have 5,000 people that are literally next to it. Uh, that are trying to be able to find a way to be able to penetrate the barrier illegally. Uh, but all the cameras are focused on those that are trying to move illegally and not focused on 100,000 people a day that are moving legally. So there are some issues we do have to resolve. This is an issue that I would hope we would get re resolution on. I'd hope we'd get resolution on a larger immigration package last February, but that proved to be elusive for us, and hopefully we can get that done in the next term. I'm curious, um, Senator Biggs, last month I know that you said I don't think the government is going to shut down. So what changed between then and now. Is it the president acting unpredictably? Uh, well, the, the, the president said for months and months that he wants to have funding for border security, for wall, whatever that may be. Uh, he said that for a long time. So I, while, while at the end of it, everyone's focused in on did he have a deal, did he not have a deal on the CR when he came through, uh, he's been pretty clear for months on this issue. I really think there were a couple issues here. One is the continuing resolution. Instead of doing actual appropriations, doing it the right way, the way it should be done, this was literally being punted into the next session. Myself, a lot of others said we're very, very close to getting the appropriations done. Let's just press through and finish the appropriations the right way instead of just punting this. The second part was there was a whole group of folks in the House that were very frustrated to say there wasn't additional border security funding. And uh, they felt very strongly, maybe much larger. The Senate had passed a $1.6 billion through our committee. They had passed $5 billion through their committee. That had never been resolved even between the House and the Senate. And uh, so it has come to a head now. I wish this had come to a head months ago when it should have, because everyone saw this train wreck coming. Uh, but now we're here at this point.
Senator, I want to get your thoughts on the announcement that Brett McGurk, uh, the U.S. Special Envoy to defeat ISIS, is going to be resigning at the end of the year. This, of course, in the wake of James Mattis resigning as uh, Defense Secretary come February. But this as a result of the president's policy just announced in Syria, something that you suggest may be actually up for discussion right now in that White House lunch. Um, what are your thoughts? What, what do you think this portends? It's not good what it pretends. Uh, we, he's been very active in the region trying to be able to navigate all the different players. He knows all the different players in the region, so he's a good negotiator in that sense. Uh, and it's important that we finish all this out. Uh, defeating ISIS is not about negotiating our way out of it, though. Uh, this is a hard-nosed, tenacious group, very different than like the Taliban in Afghanistan. There are Taliban's more like a political party uh, that you have some very radical individuals and some not so much. So you can negotiate with parts of the Taliban. You're not going to negotiate with any of ISIS. And uh, so the challenge is, for someone that knows the players in the region, it certainly would be helpful to be able to retain them. And I'm disappointed that he's leaving. Senator, do you know of any experienced military minds who the president is listening to with regard to setting up his Syria policy? I don't, actually. I don't know who the inner advisors are in Syria. I've, I've been one to say that we need to finish the task in Syria. Our relationship with the Kurds is decades long, uh, and it's very important that we maintain that ongoing relationship. We're training, we're assisting, we're not leading in the battle except against ISIS. Uh, but us being in proximity around the Kurds does matter significantly in that long-term relationship. But Senator Langford, I'm sure that you have read some of the articles that I have that indicate the majority of military minds are not pleased in the least with the president's actions in Syria and feel that it was rather a whim, something that may have happened at the result of a conversation with Turkish President Erdogan. How disturbing is that to you? Obviously, I don't know how the president made the decision. It would be disturbing if all the military advisors uh, that were advising him gave one way and President Erdogan gave the other way. I don't trust President Erdogan. I don't trust the way that he is leading Turkey right now. Uh, Turkey has been a stalwart ally for us for decades, and President Erdogan is turning it away from the United States. And uh, so that is concerning to me of what President Erdogan is doing in that country right now. But this is an issue. Afghanistan is going to be a quick issue as well because we have a very active peace process and reconciliation process between the Taliban and the, and the Ghani government in Afghanistan. We need to allow that to be able to finish and then to be able to back off our fight once that peace process is finished instead of short-circuiting it. I do think we'll have long-term basing in Afghanistan, just like we have long-term basing in Honduras to be able to take the fight to narco terrorists in Central and South America. I think we'll have long-term basing in Afghanistan, taking it to counterterrorism in that region as well. But in the meantime, uh, the battle there needs to continue until we actually get reconciliation of that government. Oklahoma Republican Senator James Langford, I very much appreciate your time, sir, on this busy news day. You Thank bet. you for your time. Glad to do it.